My dear friends in Christ, today we see in a very striking way the compassion, the very human tenderness, we might say, of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. We have this moving scene of a corpse being carried out of the city, the only son of his mother. We can hardly imagine the grief of that mother, who was a widow, at the death of her only son. And our Lord is touched by this. And something unusual happens, something a little out of the ordinary from the average course in our Lord's ministry. He performs a miracle without anybody asking anything. He also does not ask of any sign of faith from this woman. Usually our Lord would have asked of some sign of faith. But immediately he goes up to this grieving woman and restores to her his, her son. And there are two points that I'd like to draw from this gospel story. First, this is our God acting with such tenderness and compassion. He knows our needs. He knows our sorrows. He wants to help us at every moment because of his infinite charity, his infinite love for us. In the high school theology class this last week, we were discussing various heresies. Heresies and heretics. Tertullian did not want to forgive heretics. He said that they should never be allowed back into the church. Many centuries later, the Jansenists came up with a terrible version of what they thought God was, a punisher. Strict justice was the God of the Jansenists. They didn't know anything of his mercy and compassion. You see a little bit of this in the modern heresy of the Fenians. They refuse to look at God's goodness. We ought to never doubt the goodness of God. The second point St. Paul gives us in the epistle when he says, bear one another's burdens. Our Lord was certainly bearing the burden of this widow. He did not have to care. He did not have to help. But care he did. And he immediately went to help. We ought to show this same compassion, this same immediate desire to help our fellow men. We should not need to be asked. You can find, if you look, many stories of charity in the news. Unfortunately, most of the time it's sad or tragic things, frustrating things we see in the news. But on occasion you hear about something good. There was a man uh, during the recent hurricane in the Bahamas. He went and bought 100 generators from his own money. He donated these generators to the poor people in the Bahamas that were without power. There was another story of a, a, a biker. This man, they said, stood in line for five days so that he could buy bicycles for the people in the Bahamas that couldn't use their cars. We see these extraordinary acts of charity, heroic charity even, coming from 
men and women who are not even of the true faith. We have to ask ourselves, when we face our judge, will he say to us, why did you not follow my example? You especially, who I have showered with so many graces and gifts. My dear friends, let us follow his example. His zeal, his charity knows no bounds. Because today's gospel story seems, it seems like such a striking event, the raising of one from the dead, and it is a striking event. Hardly a greater miracle can be imagined. But our dear Lord, out of zeal for our souls, for the charity, for us, that knows no limits, performs miracles like this and greater on a daily basis. When mortal sin is forgiven, life is restored. That a person in the state of mortal sin truly is dead. And that by a miracle, God gives grace, gives life back to that soul. If we look with the eyes of faith, we can see a scene that is just as moving as the scene in today's Gospel. Christ, without being asked, has compassion. He gives His grace to the sinner that He might seek penance. And with one word, as he said to the man in the gospel story, arise. With one word he says, Absolvo, I forgive. And that dead soul is brought back to life and then again placed in the arms of his Holy Mother Church. My dear friends in Christ, if we look about us with the eyes of faith, we will see as the saints did the goodness of God in everything. Saint Francis in nature, he saw God in the birds and the bees and the trees and the sky. Saint Teresa of Avila loved to think of God particularly when she saw water. So many of the saints, St. Francis de Sales, could find God in absolutely everything. Let us do the same. And let us never forget that we too can be instruments to spread His goodness, that others might see God in us. Let us be charitable, self-sacrificing, and without being asked. Let us show ourselves to be followers of our Lord, who said, By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, that you have love for one another. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.